are you today? I brought Whoa. in a special guest with me, our 70th Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, who is uh, going to give you a quick briefing out of his meetings at the White House today. I know some of you may have questions following on the Secretary's Iran speech yesterday. He has just a few minutes to take some of your questions, and then I'll take over from there and handle the rest of the briefing. Uh, Secretary Pompeo, welcome. This is our press briefing room. Thanks. Great to have you here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, actually, I actually want to start by talking. It's almost exactly one month since I've been here, uh, and I made a handful of commitments at the beginning, uh, not the least of which uh, was that I would put the team back on the field, and we've taken uh, significant steps to date in uh, working towards that direction. There still remains a great deal of work to do, uh, but you should know I am uh, committed to that, and we we'll get there. Uh, we've lifted the hiring freeze. We can now hire the most talented person, including family members here, both things that weren't possible when I arrived. Um, we've made substantial progress in some of our senior level uh, processes so that we get our ambassadors and senior level persons working here in the building. Nothing uh, to report just yet, um, but uh, as I committed when I gave testimony on my confirmation hearing, um, we're going to flood the zone. We're going to work on this diligence, one of my highest priorities, to make sure uh, that we've got uh, the right people in the right places. Uh, every place in the world and here in Maine State as well so we can accomplish our diplomatic mission. Um, I hope in the coming week or two uh, to have several significant announcements about who some of the uh, new senior leaders will be. Uh, second, uh, I left the White House. I uh, was in uh, the, the bilateral meetings with the uh, South Koreans. They were constructive. I think um, Sanders has already given a press conference about this, so I'm happy just to take questions about it, but suffice it to say, um, we are continuing to prepare both our team and the White House uh, so that in the event that the summit takes place on June 12th, we are fully prepared uh, with the mission statement having not changed uh, at all. Uh, we are committed to uh, achieving denuclearization and uh, creating conditions such that uh, the North Korean regime no longer threatens the world. Final thought, I gave some remarks yesterday on the President's strategy with respect to the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, and I, I think it's important that um, I reemphasize that the, the, the tasks that Iran needs to undertake aren't that difficult. I, I've seen reports that these are a fantasy and they can't happen, but we, we ask for things that are really very simple that, frankly, most nations in the world engage in. Uh, we ask them to stop firing missiles into, mm -hmm. into Riyadh. This is not, it's not a fantasy to imagine the Iranians making a decision not to fire missiles into another nation and threatening American lives that travel through that airport. Um, it's not a fantasy to ask them to cease engaging in terror. Uh, these were all a set of demands, the demands we put on the rest of the world. If, uh, if it was the case that uh, uh, some other country in the Middle East desired to build a nuclear weapon system, we would work to stop them too. Uh, these, these, are, these are a set of simple requirements that the Iranian regime could quite easily comply with, and it would benefit the Iranian, Iranian people to an enormous extent. And so, um, frankly, what we laid out seemed like uh, a pretty straightforward set of requirements that we would put on any country in the world to stop malign behavior that threatens other of its neighbors and other parts of the world. And with that, Heather, I'm happy to take a couple questions. Okay, uh, just a few minutes for questions. Uh, Matt, we uh, met Matt on our last trip. Uh, yes, sorry, Matt, Matt, good to see you. In good to see you, sir. Washington. <laughs> Think about <laughs> where it was for a second. <laughs> Well, it's certainly not Pyongyang, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, just on North Korea and the meetings today, I, I, uh, we don't met. We have we have just met, so I don't know if you're a betting man. But if you were a betting man, what would you say the odds are for this meeting actually coming off in the vet at the date and venue that's been set? And if it, uh, are you prepared to go back or to meet again uh, wherever with Kim Jong Un if that is decided, if that's necessary to actually? fully prepare for a summit? I'll take your second question first. Uh, second one is uh, uh, we, we, will do, uh, we, we will do what it takes to make sure that this is a successful meeting, whether that's meeting uh, with the North Koreans in some third country or whatever, whatever it may take. We are prepared. The President will ask us 
uh, to ensure that um, we've done all we can to make sure that we have the real opportunity to have this historic successful outcome. Uh, and I'm not a betting man. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't care to predict whether it will happen, only to predict um, that uh, we'll be ready in the event that it does. Uh, Mr. Secretary, yes, sir. Uh, thanks very much. Um, there were reports that when you met with Kim Jong-un, you were looking out at a sunset and he allegedly said, wouldn't it be great if there were American hotels uh, lining the scene? Do you believe that he's open to the idea of American investment in North Korea? And can you also give us your thoughts on, on what would explain the change in tone from North Korea? The president said he thought China had something to do with this. You mean the uh, tone the, this past week the, as the opposed to last week, the correct. trajectory? Uh, no, I, 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 I'm not going to talk about that, speculate about that. We're, we're preparing. We're continuing to do our work and lay the foundation for a successful meeting. I'm, I'm confident we'll get there. Uh, with respect to uh, Chairman Kim, I, I haven't spoken publicly about the conversations we've had. They were between he and I. Uh, but I do have a real sense uh, that he would, um, he would find American investment, American technology, American know-how of real value to his people. And it's something that uh, we, he and I had a chance to speak about uh, generally. Uh, and I do, think, I do think it's something that if we get this right and we get the uh, denuclearization right, that uh, America would be uh, quite capable of delivering them with uh, lots of things that would make life better for the North Korean people. Um, the South Korean government today put the chances at, you know, we're not talking specific numbers here, but they did put it at 99 um, I heard that. I heard they um, said 99. Um, is there something that gave President Trump pause in direct conversations that this government has had with the North Koreans? And, and how would you describe, since you've left Pyongyang, um, what kind of, of communication the United States has had with the government of North Korea? Yeah, I, I, I won't characterize that. I don't think there's anything that's given us pause. Chairman Kim asked for this meeting. President Trump agreed to undertake it. We worked to find a date and location. We got those set. And since then, we're driving on. Uh, it, it is clear we are, we are working to make sure that there's a common understanding about the contents of what will be discussed. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. But again, it could, this could be something that comes right to the end and it doesn't happen. As the President said, we'll see. And I think that's the place that we find ourselves. Uh, Yes. So the president yes, said, "Thank you for doing this." Uh, the president said that the, the summit might be delayed. Are you discussing now the uh, possible new dates or it being delayed with the North Koreans? And what are the issues that would prevent it to be on June 12? Are there logistical or on the, the, the things you want to discuss with them? We're still working towards June 12. But you're discussing this with them. We're working towards June 12. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. If I could turn to Iran. Uh, in your speech yesterday, you talked about this unprecedented financial pressure that you want to bear on Iran. I think your critics, when they bring up the idea of uh, a fantasy, they say that it's because the Europeans won't go along with you on these sanctions and that, therefore, you can't recreate this tremendous financial pressure. How do you, uh, what do you say to those critics? How do you get the Europeans to go along and then others like China or Russia who, who continue to abide by the agreement? It's really straightforward. This is a global challenge. This is a global challenge. I mentioned in my remarks yesterday, right? Could force assassinations in European countries. This is a shared threat across the world. And I am confident that we can collectively develop a diplomatic response that achieves the simple outcomes that we put forward. We, we wouldn't tolerate Iceland doing what the Iranians are doing. We wouldn't tolerate Chad doing what the Iranians I mean, I could just pick a number. I'm sort of tripping through the alphabet, right? We wouldn't tolerate another nation behaving with terrorist activity but putting proxy forces that threaten Americans in Iraq. We just, the, the list is long. We, we wouldn't tolerate that, right? If somebody else created an equivalent of Hezbollah, would we sit by? We wouldn't, neither would the Europeans, neither will the other Arab countries. Russia and China don't, don't, don't see that as a positive impact around the world either. So I am confident that there's a set of, a set of overlapping values and interests here that will drive us to the same conclusion. 
about the need to respond to the Islamic Republic of Iran's threats to the world. I'm, I'm sorry, you saw, saw some of the responses. Sure. Um, if we could just go back to the president's comments today uh, discussing China, mm -hmm. and he was uh, he caused some alarm when he spoke about uh, Xi's second meeting with Kim Jong Un. Mm -hmm. Do you know any more about that meeting and why he um, is so hesitant to say that the Chinese were helpful in that meeting? I, I don't have anything to add to what the president said there. Okay, are the Chinese helping uh, push forward the U.S. Uh, Kim Jong Un summit. Can you the, talk the about The Chinese their role? have offered historic assistance in the pressure campaign, literally historic assistance. President Trump has made clear, and um, I, I've made clear too, uh, that it is incredibly central that that pressure remain in place, and that China continue to participate in that pressure campaign. And uh, we have every reason to expect that they will continue to do so. Uh, Hi. Rouhani said yesterday that uh, he questioned, who are you to tell another nation what to do in its foreign policy? So who are you to tell them what to do? Uh, what response do you have to him? Yeah, I, I didn't see those remarks. Uh, the Iranian people get to choose. The Iranian people get to choose for themselves the kind of leadership they want, the kind of government that they want. They get to choose the, the individuals who lead their country and then uh, they get to live with the choices that those leaders make. Uh, I wasn't describing what Mr. Hara Mr. Rouhani should do or what Mr. Zarif should do. I was only articulating what America intends to do. much, Mr. Secretary. So uh, my question is on the Iranian hostage. Uh, yesterday you mentioned that uh, the government is working very hard to bring the American hostage home. Could you please give us an update and then elaborate what efforts are underway given the frosty relations between the two things? Yes, I suppose one might have two months ago described the relationship between the United States and DPRK as frosty, and we returned three Americans. We almost always have our citizens detained by countries that aren't friendly to us. We work. We work to find mechanisms that deliver these important outcomes. I have talked to many family members, and I know how central that is. You, you can rest assured that not only is the State Department, but the entire United States government working diligently to bring each. I mentioned a handful of names yesterday. There are more around the world I didn't identify in yesterday's remarks you should know we are working diligently along every avenue that we can develop to get these folks to return back back home, back to their families. Yeah, I'll take one more other. Okay, yeah. okay thanks. Um, I'm trying to make this worth our time. Um, on Iran. That'd be useful. <laughs> That's yeah. our, our last <laughs> question. Um, the, the demands, or whatever you want to call them, that you laid out for Iran yesterday, it seems like there's be, partially because you've laid them all out and partially because of what they are, there's not going to be much room for negotiation, if any, on any of those. Would you agree with that? And because of the way that was put out there, what makes you think that Iran is going to be willing to work with the U.S. on this? If it's sanctions, wouldn't that take a very long time at this point? I don't know which of those demands. Uh, should we allow them to be terrorists? Is that, is that one we should compromise on? There, there is should no we? How many missiles are they allowed to fire? I mean, I'm, right. the, the, so the, 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 the answer is what we, the, bench, the, the, the benchmark I set forward yesterday is a very low standard. It's the standard behavior we expect from countries all around the world. There, is, there aren't a special set of rules that we set forward yesterday for Iran. We simply ask them to behave the way normal, non-belligerent nations behave. That's it. It's, a, it's simple. Um, we, didn't, we didn't, there's not a special category of people who are permitted to fire missiles into Riyadh. <laughs> we just ask them to behave like a normal nation. And so I have every reason to think that the Iranian people want that for their country as well. Uh, this, is a, this is a rich country with a deep civilization and a wonderful history. And I'm convinced, I'm convinced that the people of Iran, when, when they can see a path forward which will lead their country to stop behaving in this way, will choose that path. Thank you all. I look forward to seeing you down here. Yes. Everybody have a good day. Soon. I can't promise soon, but seeing you. <laughs> Thanks, sir.